So, with, with that being said, that means, um, and, and when I say it, the, see, the majority of uh, black folk, the Adolfs, descendants of slaves, just carry on the legacy of depression, pain, um, um, chattel slavery, rape, and everything negative and downtrodden. They, they, they were taught not to even look at the white man in his eye. So you already know when somebody could come to talk to these people, a little bitty farmer from Georgia, from Georgia named Elijah Poole, and he spoke to the defeated nature of black people. He, he spoke to the self-esteem that had to be replaced, re-institutionalized, I mean, re-instituted back into our um, being because we lost it. So most of us were, you know, like today, incarcerated. And a lot of them for our lack, lack of knowledge. So when Elijah said on the quest, to wake black folk up and start with the people that you write off from society and clean them up from whatever is holding them in bondage and let them know that they are loved, they are worthy, they are the children of the most high. Teach them mathematics, teach them science, teach them the love of themselves and the love of their nation. Oh, y'all don't know the valuable the value of that type of teaching for the time that it was. So I honor him for that. You know, now, when he starts saying, was there some propaganda? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's propaganda in that teaching. It takes nothing away from, in my opinion, it takes nothing away from, um, my respect and my love for Elijah Muhammad. My grandmama, when well, she was really my great aunt, but we, I call her my grandmama, she would always say, baby, eat the meat and throw away the bone. I mean, things are so common and so simple, it seems like we have a hard time of getting it. Eat the meat and throw away the bone. So whatever's good out of this conversation that you can relate to, eat it. Take it with you. And what you think I'm saying that don't tickle your fancy or it doesn't resonate in you any place, throw that away. You know what I'm saying? So, when we realize that Elijah Muhammad for that time was a miracle because he made black people fall in love with themselves. When at first, we all we did was experienced so much more of the hate that hate was producing on us. Okay? And so for white folks, y'all can't understand that because you was never made to feel that way. Oh yeah, you've had um, uh, uh, Italians were persecuted, when, you know, every group, the uh, Irish, and I respect your um, Holocaust, I mean, I respect your enslavement, I respect all of that. And so I know you know about oppression. But when you start looking at me and don't see the years and years and years of oppression from something that I cannot assimilate into because of systematic uh, situation, and you see how you've assimilated into a society, then you have to say, well, I must admit, you taking more bullshit than I have. And if you can't do that, then we'll never get past this. Because it keeps going on and on and on. And people want to keep saying stuff um, like, well, well, well. You know, you wasn't taught that. Even the Native American have their own um, sovereign land and nation. But us as descendants of slaves have nothing. We're just like still the dogs of white people. And I know that sounds terrible. But because it seems to be very difficult for 
this Pharaoh to let us go. The, this engine feeds off our oppression. What else can I call it? That, you know, that's not saying uh, anything derogatory other than who's in control. Black people that set up this system. They didn't set it up. And when y'all can't acknowledge the most elementary part of this whole matrix, then it makes it real difficult. Because it's real painful. And I understand it. But the only way my grandchild is going to be able to live in this world in peace, if it's still here, is that if we have a conversation, y'all. Because I believe, like Anne Frank, and like Earth, Wind, Fire said, a child is born with a heart of gold. It's the way of the world that makes his heart so cold. So, that's what I believe. And I believe that if you take a black baby and a brown baby and a white baby and a um, red baby and a Chinese baby, and you put them all, and they're about maybe, mm, let's say, anywhere from nine months old to about, mm, maybe about 18 months. And just watch them interact. And then take another group of babies. That have been. Not infected. With the. Um, insane. Mental illness of racism. Okay. And even though it's difficult. Because as black people. We want to definitely make sure our story is not forgot. And our pain is so great because it keeps happening. So it's like we can't never get out of this pain body. So we continue to tell our children what's going on about these infidels. However, if you're able to allow those babies to grow up on the island, away from y'all contaminated, mentally ill, uh, dysfunctional adults they would figure out a way to work out their differences and they wouldn't have this baggage they wouldn't and so a lot of y'all can't see that I can't get mad at you because you can't I'll just say keep on living maybe one day you will but that's what I know so far and I know that man is not this physical body. Man is spirit. And the same spirit that evolves, that manifests itself. I mean, it's, that's what it is. It's, it's a spirit. And it's, it's in me. It's in the Chinese person. It's in the red person. Well, they got different cultures or whatever and things that separate us. But if we think about life in that term, then we just know how much work got to be done. And it probably won't get done here. Remember, America was an experiment. You know, to me, in my opinion, the experiment gone mad. That's in my opinion. You know, I don't think America's going to last as long as all the other great civilizations. Then you got black people talking about we all got to get together and we all got to be on the same page. And we're, No, we don't. We was never all on the same page when they kidnapped us. Some of us were from different tribes, different tongues, different languages. Some of us didn't really like each other. But they mixed us all together because we had black skin. We had some of us had different, some of us warlords. Some of us Watusi, some of us was Igbo, some of us was, we were all types of tribes. Because Africa is a continent. 
And there's a lot of little countries. It's a lot of countries inside of the continent. So that's what I say to everybody that continues to say, oh, we got to think alike. We We're not. And we don't. And that's why. So since they have all lumped us together, and even though we know we may not get along because we come from different tribes and different families, the Quran says that we may get to know one another, not antagonize one another. So, that's why Allah made us into different tribes and families, right? God made us different so we'll be like, oh, hey, you know, oh, look at you, how are you doing? Not so we can try to subdue and control each other. So that's where the problem comes from, right? So with that being said, I hope I cleared up some of that stuff. Um, concerning Nick Cannon and also my um, reverence for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Alright, so with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next one.